Hey YouTube, this is nj 4 Water 5 and uh, this is going to be part 3 to my e-bike build. I was going to go ahead and do the battery in part 3, but I got to thinking about it. I'm like, okay, wait a second. If I do that battery, I get it all done. It's all it's all tacked up, ready to go, ready to throw on my e-bike. How am I going to charge it? So I got to thinking, wait a second. I should probably make a charger first and then build the e-bike battery that way. I can top it off or anything like that. And hopefully by the time I build my e-bike battery, my balance board will be here. Um, I ordered one of those active balancers to go with this BMS. And um, I figure with the active balancer and the charger I'm about to make, I should be able to keep it well balanced and charged. And it should charge fairly quickly because the charger I'm about to build is going to be a 10 amp charger. So it's going to be 58.8 volts. And I probably could go higher on the amperage. Because I believe the batteries I have say that you can charge at a, at a max of 1.6 amps you know, consistently. But I'd like to keep it down. And I also don't want to charge my batteries to 4.2. Because I also did a lot of uh, you know reading and stuff on e-bike batteries. And it seems that if you can keep your batteries between... Uh, 4.1 and 3.5 they tend to last a lot longer and this is gonna be my personal not my personal ride you know I can't pedal a bike right now because of my current situation but I believe I'll be able to handle the bike so it might look like I'm pedaling and enjoying the world out there but I'll actually be using a motor um, so to get to the charger I got to thinking about it and uh, uh, when me and Terry were discussing his build, uh, he was talking about how he wanted to charge. He wanted to make sure that his solar charger uh, could charge fairly quickly. So I came up with the idea because I had one of these on hand and I had just purchased a brand new uh, server power supply. This is a 1200 watt version, but in order for you to have 1200 watts, you have to have, I believe it's two, 200 volts to 240 in. I don't have 200 to 240 in, so I have to stick with the, uh, let's see, where does it say, input, 110 to 120, which is what I have, that'll give you a max of 900 watts, 75 amps, and uh, yeah, so I figured this thing would be perfect, because uh, 58, or you know, whatever the voltage is I'm going to be using is going to come out to around 500 watts, so uh, these are getting more popular and more popular. I've been using these things forever. I've, this is probably about my fourth or fifth one. I use it actually in my power supply. If you look at my videos, you'll see a power supply I built where I actually used one of these. And it's been going strong uh, for two years now. And I mean, I've had no issues with it yet. Uh, knock on wood. But I got this. It actually says it's an 1800 watt. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be 1800 watts 20 40 60 amps but I got to looking at other descriptions online and uh, watching a few videos and they it, it seems like this is actually probably just a 1500 watt and I want to say 25 amps max but I'm not gonna push it that far uh, so hopefully pushing it at a half its actual usage It'll, it won't get warm too often. Uh, I'm not going to desolder the pots on this one. There's a trick I learned that you can use with tubing. Um, I'm going to end up doing that with this. Uh, so between this and the server power supply, it should give me enough voltage to keep my battery bike, uh, uh, you know, charged. Uh, just to run down the parts real quick because I'm going to try to make an, an instructable with this and I know the beginning is going to be rather long um, Like most of my videos I plan on using and all the links will be down in the description. Uh, these are Amazon links. Uh, they're not uh, I'm not making nothing off of them. I just found the links online and just threw them on there um, You can probably find the parts a lot cheaper if you you know do a little bit of looking uh, I know eBay usually sells most of these parts cheaper if you're willing to wait for them to get to your door. Um, we're going to be using an 1800 watt boost converter. Actually, probably a 1500 watt. A Hewlett Packard uh, switching power supply, a server power supply. This is brand new. I got lucky and found it for $15 on eBay. 
Uh, I plan on using XT60s, and the reason why I'm going with XT60s is because it's got the spark uh, thing on there that keeps it from sparking. Um, I'm going to be using the metal banana plugs only because of their current ca their current capabilities. I found these online, and these are supposed to be able to carry a high amperage. Uh, these are actually made for audio. They're audio grade, but they should work perfect for my purposes. This is just to make the plug that I'm going to be using to plug in, into the end. Um, some heat sinks I had laying around. Um, some uh, potenti potentiometer knobs. A simple on-off switch. Uh, some diodes. I'm going to be running two diodes in series so that uh, I won't get no back feed from the battery whenever I have it plugged in. I'm going to be using a VAM 9020. Um, looking this up and doing all the research on it, it looked like you can get this semi-accurate. It'll be enough accurate that I'll be able to test it with a multimeter to make sure that whatever's coming out is going to be. Um, I purchased some small fans. These are fans actually used on uh, 3D printers. Uh, I also purchased some uh, grills that'll go on here. They haven't got here yet. They're supposed to be here today. Um, and then miscellaneous wires. I had some 12 gauge and some, I believe this is 10 gauge laying around. I also have some 8 gauge that I might end up making this out of. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to see if I can fit 8 gauge through these little holes. And if I can, I'll be using 8 gauge for the exterior wire. Um, I believe that's it. Oh, the case, the main part. The, pay, the case is actually going to be a Pelican 1150. Uh, I was actually going to use this for a Bluetooth speaker build, but it, all the parts in here fit almost perfectly. They're compact. It looks like it can keep it cool. So now that I've laid out all the parts, um, I guess we'll get to building. I would like to thank JLPCB for making this video possible. Thank you JLPCB for sponsoring this project. JLPCB is one of the largest prototype enterprises in China with over 10,000 PCB prototypes ordered and produced per day. The monthly overall capacity is 4,000 square meters where they do one layer, two layer or multi-layer prototype boards. Upload your Gerber file today for a low special price of $2 and get quality PCBs at your doorstep in as little as 3 days.
Alrighty, so I got the box complete and I got everything done. Uh, the only issue I may have is this hole right here. Uh, I got to looking at it and it looks like almost like maybe the hole should have been more straight with this uh, with this uh, bottom piece. So I may have to fix that, which will, won't be a problem because the knob will hide the, the messed up part. Besides that, um, I was going to... I wanted to put a protection on there for when I plug in a battery and I got to doing research and if you guys are like me you know when you start doing research you get all kinds of answers to your question and none of it's ever right uh, I wanted to use a diode to protect it but then I got to looking at the diodes I have and they only have 15 amp diodes and I figured well if I'm gonna use 15 amp diodes I'm gonna have to use like three of them in parallel and then I got to reading how using three in parallel could do this and could do that and yada 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 and then I uh, seen a, a listing where a guy said well why don't you just use a relay a high amp relay I've got tons of these so uh, I got to looking and I figure what I could do is I could put a relay in here and what I'll do is the relay be connected to this this will be connected to the positive going out and what it'll do is that when I plug in a battery I plan on putting an LED that tells me when it's off and on that way I know you know it's off or on um, it'll have a main switch and then a switch that you turn on whenever you're ready to charge this will protect uh, my FETs and everything on my charger so that whenever you know I plug in you know a high amp battery like an e-bike battery it doesn't blow the FETs or anything like that so so I've got the box done. It looks like I might clean up some edges and stuff like that. So now the box is complete and after I clean up the edges, it's time to work on the electronics and I'm gonna start with the power supply.
All right, YouTube, that was my take on a e-bike battery charger. Uh, this is a part three of my e-bike battery build. I was gonna make part three my battery build, but then I decided I don't have no way to charge it, so I better, you know, find a charger first. I looked online and I found a bunch of, you know, cheap chargers around 30, 40 bucks. But looking at the reviews on them, and I seen an unboxing and where the guy tore it down. It didn't look like they were made of really high quality components and it looked like it might fail over time. So then I got to looking at some more commercial grade power supplies and those were upwards of 200 to, I mean, I think you could go all the way up to $500 and I didn't have that out of pocket. Uh, all the stuff I built this with, I had on hand, um, but I do have the, I do have links for these and I'll leave them down in the description. Uh, mind you, the links are Amazon. Uh, Amazon could be a little bit more pricier than eBay or China. I think uh, I looked these up and purchasing the main components from China, you're looking at around 30, 40 bucks. Uh, eBay, local US, you're looking at about 60 bucks. And Amazon, you're looking at anywhere about 80 to 90 bucks. It just depends on how fast you want to get them. This is the amp control, volt control, power on and off the relay protection the light tells me the relay is on the banana jacks output fan input fan input fan for the server and AC in it's constant current constant voltage I believe I can do up to 90 volts uh, up to 20 amps um, just keep in mind that you need to, you know, refer to Ohm's law whenever you're going to determine what kind of output you're going to do on here because you don't want to overload the boost converter. Um, I believe the specs of the boost converter said it could only do 40, volt, 40 amps in. It's got a 60 amp fuse. To, it's got three 20 amp fuses for a combine of 60 amp. But I believe it said 40 amp max in. So that kind of limits my output on whatever I do. Of course, the lower the voltage, the more amps I can push as long as I don't overload the boost converter. If there was anything I'd do different, I may use a bigger case where I could put two uh, of the server power supplies in series to get 24 volts. Uh, that would give me a higher output. But I I'm perfectly fine with the way this is. I mean. I can charge my e-bike battery now, I can charge in any of my 10S batteries. Uh, constant current, constant voltage makes it great. I can also adjust this. Uh, one thing you can't do with the other chargers, uh, I want to keep, like let's say I want to keep my voltages at 4.1. Uh, I can adjust this to 4.1 times you know, 14 so that I think it comes out to like 53 or something like that, 53.8, somewhere around there. I'll have to do the math and put that down at the bottom of the screen but it gives me complete control over how high I you know charge my e-bike battery so that it lasts a lot longer uh, on the output cables I went with the XT90 with spark protection and I went with these banana jacks uh, these banana jacks were affordable and they could actually handle the amp rating that I'm looking I'll show you one of those real quick just in case I forgot to show you the video. It's got two screws and the wire fits all the way down into there and you just come back and screw this over the top. As you'll see in the video, as you've already seen in the video, I tested it uh, it gave me the correct output. I have not checked, I've not charged the battery with it yet and I plan to I plan to as soon as I have my e-bike battery built. Uh, I don't see it having an issue. I've seen other people use these. I looked online, I looked on YouTube to see if I could find DIY e-bike chargers and I only found one. The guy uh, 3D printed his case and he used the same, I believe it might have been the same boost converter. Uh, he seemed to not have any issues with his. I think he used a uh, computer power supply, the uh, regular square ones. And uh, he used that to charge his e-bike. This thing measures in at 10 with the banana jacks by eight and a half 
by four and a half. And it probably weighs about two to maybe three pounds. If you guys have any questions about it or if you've seen something I could do better, just leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, the next video I'll be doing the battery, so I will probably check you guys out in part four of the e-bike battery build.